you do say in the in the documentary, Michael, that um, it's it's roughly one person in a million per year that could be the, the source of, of the uh, the infection. Um, and as you said, the bar talk was that cannibalism was rife and that you just needed to kind of make that connection. Were you then surprised that uh, that crew didn't manifest itself outside of the 4A people, uh, you know, in other groups within Papua New Guinea? Well, <clears throat> you need the two things. Cannibalism, if you want to use that term, per se is not necessarily harmful. Um, and certainly with exo-cannibalism, when you go out and kill a missionary or a, an enemy or whatever, that's probably perfectly safe thing to <clears throat> But uh, the, um, the recycling <clears throat> of brain material within a community um, is a risk simply because of the possibility of this strange disease, prion disease, Kreutzfeldt-Jakob disease occurring. And if it does, then <clears throat> you have the possibility of a source for this uh, and the expansion of the agent and an epidemic. Um, so even though the practice was much wider than the foray, and of course I must emphasize that Although we talked about the foray, there are actually nine other linguistic groups around the foray who are all contiguous with the foray, who have also come down with Kuru, but only 20% of the total number of cases occurred in these peripheral groups. So, <clears throat> and if you go beyond that, the practices were there, mm. but the disease wasn't, because it hadn't expanded out. And there, we're now discovering why the epidemic went the way it is, my colleague Jerome Whitfield and I have been working um, in different groups, finding out the details of the mortuary practices. And in some uh, cases, people didn't eat the brain. In some cases, they didn't feed it to children. It was only eaten by the older women. And in some cases, they stopped eating Kuru patients because they, were, they thought they were at risk. And all of these things would block transmission. So we're beginning to, still beginning to understand <coughs> the way that the epidemic spread. And um, so there's still more work to do, even in the field. Mm. Just to, to take that point one, one step further, you're saying one person in a million per year. Um, there are more than a million people in Papua New Guinea, obviously. Um, wouldn't, wouldn't you expect the disease to manifest itself spontaneously elsewhere in the, in, the, in the way that you kind of had a kind of ground zero person in the one graphic there? Wouldn't there be like another person like that in another Oh, group? yeah. Well, we know, for example, there have been an identified case in, in Chimbu, uh, the, in the Central Highlands. But <clears throat> the, although the mortuary practices of, of the foray were extensive throughout the Eastern Highlands, they did not occur in the Central Highlands or in the Western Highlands. So it wasn't a practice throughout PNG. And on the coast, if... if cannibalism occurred, it was exo-cannibalism. Cannibalism. They, they used to, they wouldn't eat their own people, but they'd eat enemies. Mm. Or they'd eat missionaries. I think there were only two missionaries that died, but, so, but they get a lot of, they get a lot of press. 